Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about dictionaries and insertion order uh, in Python and how they are now uh, ordered in modern versions of Python and how that came to be. Um, so let's jump into it. Okay, in order to first start explaining the story, we have to go way back till 2012 uh, when Raymond, one of the core devs in Python, um, made a suggestion about how to represent dictionaries in a more compact and more efficient way. Um, before, before they were implemented in the compact dictionary way, uh, you could kind of imagine a dictionary as a you know, sparse hash table where a lot of stuff doesn't contain anything. Uh, and the proposal was to instead represent the entries as a, you know, an ordered sequence and have those map into the different, you know, indices here. Um, and so this, this necessarily meant that the representation was much more compact. Uh, it also had the nice side effect of being ordered based on insertion order. So you don't have to worry about, you know, or, or you can at least depend on insertion order being a thing. Um, and there's a whole bunch of here as well as some sample code here. Um, but this was kind of the inception of this idea way back in 2012. Uh, the first implementation to actually take this idea and run with it was the PyPy project, a alternate implementation of, of Python um, written in a subset of Python and has a just-in-time compiler and a bunch of other cool stuff. Um, but PyPy was the first to implement this uh, in PyPy, well, <laughs> whatever PyPy version associated with PyPy 3.5. Um, it also was released in PyPy 2 as well. So if you're if you're using PyPy uh, or a reasonably modern version of PyPy, you will have uh, this ordered property here. And um, it it both made uh, PyPy a lot faster and use a lot less memory. Some of the memory savings were somewhere from like 15 to 95 percent, depending on how full the dictionary was. Um, but yeah, no, this goes over a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the implementation details and some of the side effects of that. I'm not going to reiterate this blog post there. Um, and then in Python 3.6, uh, the compact dictionary was also implemented, but in CPython. And at the same time, there was this proposal to preserve the order of keyword arguments in a function, both for uh, splatting with star star and for collecting with star star. Uh, this would allow you to preserve any order of named arguments in a function. And conveniently, at the same time, CPython had impl implemented the compact dictionary, which also preserved the ordering there. Uh, so Python 3.6 is kind of the first version that you can depend upon. Well, it was provisional at this point, uh, but you know, now that we're past Python 3.6, we can say that you know, 3.6 was the first version in which you can depend on the insertion order of dictionaries. And again, I'll show you what that means later when we jump into code. I just want to do the history part first. Um, and then, uh, you know, this was super convenient. People really, really liked this. It made code a lot more deterministic um, and was, was much nicer to work with. And so, uh, you know, a thread came up after 3.6 was released and said, uh, hey, are we going to guarantee uh, order dictionary literals in 3.7? Because, you know, they were an implementation detail in 3.6 and, uh, you know, had a whole bunch of nice side effects here. And uh, Guido said, make it so. And so it, it became, you know, specified there. Um, and I guess the question that comes up is like, what, what does this mean? And what is different from collections.orderedict? And I'm going to first show you what it means. Um, so if we make Python, we start Python, we make a dictionary, and we assign some values to it. Uh, x5 equals 3, x3 equals 7, uh, whatever. The important thing here is the insertion order of the keys. The first time that they would enter this dictionary is preserved. So you can see that x1 equals 2. Uh, 1 is the first key that we see. Then 5 is the next key that we see. And then 3 is the next key that we see. Uh, and so that this this uh, insertion order is preserved. If we were to reassign one of the values, uh, it will still keep its original key location in here. Um, and if we wanted to move this key, we would have to remove it first. If we did del x of 1, uh, and then we did x1 equals 10, uh, this will now put x, or this will put the key 1 at the end of your dictionary. Um, and so that's that's what order preserving is here. Uh, that's That's all it really means. And uh, before Python 3.6, so I'm running 3.8 right now, but before Python 3.6, none of this was specified. And, you know, you would get kind of a haphazard ordering depending on, you know, <laughs> the weather, how you compiled your Python, like all sorts of different, uh, you know, non-deterministic non, non -deterministic, uh, factors. Um, 
And back then you could use order dict, which was a class in the collections module. It was introduced in Python uh, 2.7 and also Python 3.1, uh, which has three things that are different than dictionary. Um, and it still has three things that are different than modern dictionary. And I'm gonna show you those three differences and how you can uh, either you know, replicate them using the, a standard dictionary or you know, see how they're different in, in, um, in order dict. And so the three things that are different, uh, first are these two methods, but let's ignore those for a second. Uh, the first is that the equality of two ordered dicts is based on their ordering. So if we did collections dot dict um, one, two, three, four versus collections dot ordered dict. And of course this, this initialization would not have worked prior to the ordered dictionaries. Like I'm, I'm depending on this being an ordered dictionary. Uh, the way you used to initialize these is uh, with the list of tuples form, uh, which I guess I'll do for, for clarity's sake here. Um, so if we did three, four, uh, oops, three, four, uh, it's hard to see because it's off the screen. Um, you'll see that these are not equal to each other, even though if I would have done, you know, dict here, these two dictionaries would have been equal to each other. Um, so order dict takes the order into account when comparing our quality here. Now this is a little bit weird because it means that uh, order dict does not properly compare transitively. Uh, like if you said, you know, collections dot order dict here, uh, these are equal, um, but you know, this is this is equal to this one and this is equal to that one, but these two are not equal to each other. So there's there's some failed uh, transitivity here, which I think is a little bit weird and you know maybe should be revisited, although it would probably break so much code at this point that it's probably not worth fixing. Um, but it is, it is a factor and it is something to look out for when you're comparing ordered dictionaries um, because they have this, they have this you know, ordering to them and, and that affects their equality. That's one thing that's different. Uh, the other thing that's different is there are two convenience methods for moving items around in the dictionary. One is the pop item, which will allow you to remove an item from the beginning or the end of your dictionary. So if you had, uh, let's just make one of these. Uh, three, four, and five, six. Um, and so if you do dct.pop item, I believe this removes from the end by default. Yeah, so you can see that it removed five, six here, and we updated our order dict to no longer have this. If we do uh, last equals false, <laughs> last equals false, uh, you'll see it'll pop from the beginning instead. So that's one of the methods. Let's actually reinitialize this so that we can use our other thing. And the other uh, method is the move to end function. This allows you to take a key out and put it at the end of, the, of your mapping. Uh, so let's say that we wanted to move this three, four after five, six. So you could do dct dot move to end three. Um, and I guess you could also move it to the beginning by saying last equals true. <laughs> oh, what a weird, what a weirdly named function. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's how this can work. Uh, I want to show you ways to implement all of these things uh, using just plain dictionaries in modern Python because uh, generally you don't you don't need this anymore. Also, this equality can be really weird and really jarring. So I, you know, I tend to avoid collections.orderDict when possible. Also, collections.orderDict is slightly slower than the built-in dict because it you know it's it's its own separate class and has to do some inherency stuff. Uh, but let's show you how to implement all those three functions. So let's make a little script here. Uh, first, we're gonna do dict equal uh, first and second, and these are just gonna be two dictionaries here. And uh, in order to be the same, their keys have to be in the same order. So we can just say return uh, tuple first. So what this will do is it'll iterate over all the keys and build a tuple uh, equals tuple second. Uh, this is again, like not the most efficient. You could probably do this by doing four kv in uh, iter tools dot zip longest first second if uh, or k1 k2 if k1 does not equal k2 return false and then return first equals second so this this is a little bit more verbose way to write this um, but I'm gonna write the simpler form just because um, 
I think this is a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So we're basically checking that the keys are in the same order and that they are equal. Um, so this is this is the additional behavior that happens from ordered dict here. So if we do python3 dash i t dot pi, and we do dct eek uh, one, two, three, four, versus three, four, one, two, uh, you'll see that we get false there, but if they're in the same order, uh, then we'll get true here. So this is kind of kind of implementing the same equality algorithm that ordered dict does. Now the other thing that we have to implement is pop item. Uh, dev dct pop item. Uh, I'm going to use a named only argument here. It isn't actually a named only argument in this, but I'm going to use a better API. Last equals true. Last as a boolean equals true. Uh, and that'll be tuple. We would have tt, but we don't actually have the, the types there. So let's do that for now. Um, so last equals bool. So by default, we're going to be looking at the last item. Otherwise, we're going to look at the first item. So if last um, iter equals, I think it's iter reversed. Oh, we also need our dictionary in here. DCT, uh, so we're gonna make a reversed iterator here. Otherwise, it equals iter DCT. Uh, then we're gonna get our victim key. So key equals next it. And then we are going to remove that item from our dictionary. So we are going to do return key comma dct dot pop key. So we're going to pop that key out of our dictionary. Um, let's try that now. dct equals one, two, three, four, five, six. And dct pop item uh, last equals true. So this should give us five, six. Cool. And if we do last equals false, we should get one, two. Cool. OK, so this is how you can implement pop item without needing the special order dict class. Uh, and the last method, and I actually find this, this to be the more useful one, uh, which is move to end. Uh, you can use this to implement an LRU cache. I've actually used this, this strategy quite a few times. Uh, but let's do that one as well. DCT move to end. Um, Implementing this move to beginning is actually really tricky, so I am not going to implement that part. Um, but you could imagine well, you actually need to remove everything from the dictionary and then reinsert it, because uh, there's no convenient way to insert something at the beginning. Uh, but we're just we're just going to implement move to end and ignore this second argument here. DCT and key. So in order to move the end, uh, I actually kind of showed this already in the interactive example. We're going to remove it from the dictionary and then re-add it back, and that should just move it to the end. Um, so we're going to do dct uh, dct dot pop key, or actually dct key equals dct dot pop key. So this is going to remove it from the dictionary and then add it right back in. So this statement looks really silly, but um, it's it's going to do what we want to do here. So we want again initialize our dictionary and we want to do dct move to end and let's move the three key to the end. So you can see that uh, it has moved three four to be at the very end there. But anyway, this is basically all the difference that's left between ordered dict and normal built-in dict class and how you can kind of think about implementing these uh, these various functions there. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this was interesting. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.